Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 8-Ball Sports. And I have the first post-game analysis for week three of college football. I do apologize for not having any up last week, but there really weren't any huge upsets or really like top uh, you know, top 25 matchups. The Clemson-Texas A&M game was, was pretty good, and the USC-Stanford game, I believe, was the only top 25 matchup, if I'm correct. Uh, so I decided, you know, there weren't any huge games. None that really caught my eye. The Clemson-Texas A&M game was the later game, and it would have not the video would not have come up probably until about 11 or 12. So I just went ahead and not, did not make any last week. I do apologize for that, but this week, hoping to make uh, a lot. And it starts with the Troy upset over Nebraska. Now, as you can see, I'm an Ohio State fan, and if you've never watched one of these videos before, I say this every video, but I do these because I love college football. I'll watch every game I can. I'll have my iPad watching a game. I'll have my TV. Um, heck, sometimes I even have two TVs. Uh, I have one like downstairs, upstairs, where I can kind of be flipping back and forth. But uh, I just love college football. I watch as many games as I can, and I did watch the uh, the second half of this one mainly because it was close. Um, you know, coming in, I expected Nebraska to win this game, no problem. Uh, and at halftime, I look at the score. I see it's it's a close game, so I have Big Ten Network on my iPad. I flip on the game, and I watch. And Nebraska, I don't want to say got like dominated because obviously they didn't get blown out. But they did not look good against the Troy team that they should be beating. Um, the Scott Frost era, obviously the title of the video, not off to a very good start. 0-2, and, and it doesn't get much easier next week. They go play Michigan, and then they play, I believe, Purdue. And then the next week they play Wisconsin. So uh, maybe they beat Purdue. Maybe they pull off an upset against Michigan or Wisconsin. But if they want a chance of making a bowl game, they will have to win two of the next three games, in my opinion. They at least have to be two and three heading into the second half of their schedule. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see if they can do that. I do believe they could beat Purdue, but I don't know. Purdue almost beat Northwestern. How good is Northwestern? We don't really know how the bottom uh, teams in the Big Ten, uh, how really, truly good they are. I have the stats here for each side. Troy, uh, the main thing was the running game. Uh, you know, they, they passed for a decent amount of yards, 110 yards. Um... That was Barker, 14-21, uh, to 21, pretty good completion percentage. He did not throw a touchdown. He did throw an interception. But the run game, uh, Smith with the two touchdowns, and then the punt return uh, by Rookard, um, which was which was uh, really kept, which really was the reason I think they were in this game. Nebraska did not win special teams. Obviously, they let up a punt return, and they also um, gave up a, or they missed a field goal. Also, I do apologize for the lighting. Um, it's, I'm trying to get it worked out. It's not, not great right now, but we'll see what I can do with it. Um, so I mentioned not much passing for Troy. Uh, Willis, uh, one of the receivers, had a 39-yard catch. That was his only catch, and I believe it's pronounced Aford. Uh, I believe some of the announcers were saying it. He had four catches for 33 yards. They were the top two targets for him, um, but not much going on for Troy in the passing game, but the running game... Uh, B.J. Smith with the 11 carries, 70 yards, and the two scores. And also in the fourth quarter, Barker, the quarterback, had some huge runs. They started running kind of like an option-type offense, read option-type uh, plays. And they were really successful. Um, and then on like first and 20 in the fourth quarter, Troy kind of put the icing on the cake with a uh, – like a. it was first and 20. They just got a holding penalty. And, uh, and B.J. Smith ran it into the end zone for the score. Um but yeah, I mean, a really good upset for Troy. This is the second straight year that they've pulled off a big upset. Last year they beat LSU, obviously, um, and this year they come into Nebraska and, and beat Scott Frost, Scott Frost, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So what does this mean for Nebraska? Um, their stats on the day: they had bunch uh, 19 of 27, 177 yards. He did throw two touchdowns, but he also threw two interceptions. And uh, you know, that's. It's not what you want to see, um, but this is their this is their backup. Um, you know they they obviously lost their their kind of speedy quick quarterback. So I do give Nebraska that you know they were playing with their backup quarterback, but you can't you cannot lose to Troy. You know even if it's your backup quarterback, you cannot lose to Troy. You still should have um, better players at pretty much every position. Maybe Troy has a couple. Uh, but yeah, Washington running the ball, 14 carries, 90 yards. He did not score. And then um, their top receivers, 
Morgan Jr. with five catches, 64 yards and a score, and then Spielman, six catches, 45 yards and a score. So the passing game was okay, but the two interceptions, excuse me, cost Troy, or cost Nebraska the game. They also didn't miss a field goal, which if you look at it, in the long run, it still would have been 24-22. Um, the final score was 24-19, but, you know, maybe they make that, then they, they get a, two, a couple two-point conversions or something. The score could have been tied. Uh, the score should have been tied because they went for two a couple times, I believe, and, and did not get it. This is not a good start for the Scott Frost era, as the title of the video says. Um, and I've done this before. Uh, last year, Tom Herman, Maryland, week one, they went out and lost, and I said not a good start to the Tom Herman era. And Texas has not really done anything under Tom Herman that's um, necessarily been a huge improvement from what they were doing under Charlie Strong. I don't want to say that's going to be the same thing here with Nebraska. I believe Scott Frost is a great head coach. He obviously led UCF last year um, to an undefeated record, but they have to pick it up. You cannot lose to Troy. I think Nebraska fans were at least expecting a bowl, maybe even to contend in the, uh, the the other side of the Big Ten, not with Michigan and Ohio State. You know, They could possibly pull off the upset and beat Wisconsin and then be the team that makes it out of that side of the Big Ten. However, after the first two weeks, I don't see that happening. I just, uh, I don't see a way. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm going to try to keep these post-game analysis a little bit quicker than I have because I want to do as many of them as I can over as many games as I can. So, Texas, or excuse me, Troy versus Nebraska. Uh, Troy with the upset win, 24-19. How do you feel about that in the comment section down below? Do you think Nebraska can still make a bowl game? In my eyes, they can, but they have to either beat Michigan or Wisconsin. I don't think they can go in 1-4 uh, to the, basically their second half of the season, and then they'd have to go 5-1. and one. Sorry if you saw that fly right there. Um, and for Troy, you improved to 2-1. and one. Troy can make a bowl game this year. Uh, that's back-to-back -back years with a big win, and, and Troy trying to solidify themselves as one of the solid football programs that's not in a Power 5 conference. So do you think Wisconsin, or excuse me, do you think Nebraska can make a bowl game? Uh, leave that in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, uh, then please sure to leave a like. And if you enjoy talking about college football and, and seeing um, kind of reactions to the college football games, that flies annoying me, then please sure to hit the subscribe button. We're nearing uh, 100 subscribers. We hit the 60 mark uh, after week one. I'm hoping to hit the 70 mark after week three. I know that's uh, pretty ambitious. I think we have to get eight or nine subscribers, but I think we can do it. So if you enjoy these videos, please hit uh, that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you guys later.